Yeah. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our seminar. This week, our speaker is uh, Hiroaki Matsunaga from uh, the Charles University here in Prague and also uh, Kyoto University. Um, and he will tell us about uh, an upcoming paper on homotopy algebras and in symmetry generators. Please, Hiroki. Thank you for the introduction. So today I'm talking about yeah, homotopy algebra in quantum field theory. Uh, and this talk is almost the same as my other talk that I gave in Kyoto. So, but yeah, anyway, let me start. <laughs> and my talk is based on the so-called anti-feed or BLSTBV formalism and homotopy algebraic structure uh, that you can extract it from your Lagrangian by using such an anti-field formalism. So yeah, it is known that so Lagrangian has own homotopy algebraic structure. So you can find that for a given Lagrangian, if you can solve your master equation, then uh, you can extract your Lagrangian's homotopy algebra like this. And then, um, I mean, homological vector field of your master action or this homotopy algebra -like structure gives some differential. And then homological perturbation lemma describe your perturbative path integral. So, I mean, the Feynman graph expansion uh, will preserve your middle potency of your, I mean, yeah, your homotopy algebra -like structure. So in this sense, Lagrangian's homotopy algebra, I mean, the middle potency of Lagrangian's homotopy algebra is preserved under the, the path integral. And here, so let me first explain my notation. So we can consider our must action, and such a must action must solve the must equation. And if you consider a quantum field theory without gauge degree, then your must equation is given by your classical action itself. And after solving the master equation, uh, we write Kali phi for all of the fields collectively. So for example, for QED, our phi may be a mu or C or some matter or their antifields or antigost or Nakanishiro trap fees or something like that. Then you can delight your classical action or your master action, master action into a discontracted form. It is always possible. And this is a starting point uh, in order to extract a Homo, yeah, homotopy algebra -like structure of your Lagrangian. So we start with this form of the action. And then we must assume that, um, I mean, vertices of this action, or maybe this time. Oh, I cannot track. Ah, yeah, this one, this, this mu. Your vertices must be graded symmetric with respect to your field input. Then place property or the cyclic property will be automatic. 
in this situation, you can confirm that uh, the condition of the master equation tell us the quantum homotopy algebraic relation like this. And in my talk, underlying uh, means appropriate summation, like a cyclic summation or all permutation or <laughs> something like that, you can find. <laughs> yes, so this is Lagrange as a homotopy algebra. And here, it is known as an L, quantum L infinity algebra. But you can relax or weaken your assumption about graded symmetric property of your vertices. So you can just consider, or you can just require cyclicity only with some coefficient. Then the master equation gives a quantum A infinity structure, as you may know. So you can extract L or A infinity structure from your Lagrangian. You can choose your favorite algebra. <laughs> and when you can find L infinity algebra, you can also find an A infinity algebra. So, but yeah, these are same. Okay. So we can get the L infinity relation from your master action. And this expression between your vertices uh, is just a component expression of your L infinity relation. So please recall that as we can switch from component expression of current conservation to a kind of a form expression of your current conservation, we can switch from this component expression of your L infinity algebra to a kind of form expression written in terms of co-algebra. Again, this component expression of your L infinity relation is uh, just a new potency of your co-derivation, as you may know. So these are Lagrangian's homotopy algebra, and my talk is based on <laughs> this homotopy algebra structure. And what I would like, what I would like to tell you today is uh, like this. Today I'm talking about uh, homotopy algebraic structure of your symmetry generator quantum free theory. So I want to say that homotopy algebraic structure also appear in your realization of given symmetries. And I write mu sin for such homotopy algebras. And we can incorporate this symmetry's homotopy algebra into Lagrangian's homotopy algebra. And we can get total new potent object. And then the Feynman Hex Sorry, expansion. Can I ask you a question? Uh, mm -hmm. Is this is this global symmetries or or like gauge symmetries you're talking global. about? Global. Yes. So because Lagrangian's homotopy algebra already includes gauge symmetries. I see. Right. So I would like to consider uh adding global symmetry <laughs> into get symmetry. Okay, so anyway, the Feynman like expansion preserve this total nipotent object in the sense that this relation, like on Lagrangian's homotopy algebra and uh, 
the Feynman graph expansion. And then I'd like to say that homotopy algebra structure of this symmetry algebra uh, tell us how to realize nonlinear symmetries in your effective field theory. And this new theme also naturally includes higher form symmetries. And this mu may explain why symmetry or anomaly matching condition remains under your perturbative pass integral, even if some gauge fixing pro procedure or your pass integral may break the manifest invariance under your given symmetry. Okay, so yeah, this is today's <laughs> plan. Okay, first I want to explain homotopy algebra in realization of symmetry. And after that, I would like to explain its behavior under the path integral. And I'd like to give some comments on possible applications. Okay. So we would like to consider Uh, first, I will explain about this new sim in very intuitive way within the usual canonical formalism. Then, as you know, we will use fields and its momentum and a usual person bracket like this. And this discussion will be very intuitive. And after that, we will switch to the anti-field formalism and explain the same property more precisely. Then we will use fields and their anti-fields and the battering Birkovskis anti-bracket. Oh, this one. <laughs> and yeah, this tells us how to incorporate this new scene into Lagrangian's homotopy algebra. Okay, so first I will use the canonical formalism. So we consider a Lagrangian without gauge degrees for simplicity. Then, of course, you can consider its canonical form, very usual one. Then we suppose that this classical action is invariant under some global transformation. Here, epsilon denotes uh, some constant, and this global transformation is linear with respect to this constant, but maybe nonlinear with respect to your field. And then, as you know, the Poisson bracket will give, uh, yeah, like this. So I mean, your global symmetry can be written in terms of commutator with Poisson bracket, as usual. So to get this expression, you have to construct a generator of this global transformation. I write SA for such a generator. And this SA is a realization of your symmetry generator. SA will be written in terms of field and maybe nonlinear. And here, before considering symmetry the algebra, you have to notice that your classical action generates very, very trivial transformation like this. So, for some bracket of your action with uh, some object, always proportional to your equations of motion. So, this commutator always vanishes on shell. And we suppose that 
this global transformation from a real algebra on shell. Then you can find this kind of computation relation in terms of Poisson bracket. But this relation is maybe, I mean, up to equations of motion. This is an on shell relation. So you can extend this on shell relation to off shell, re off, off shell relation. So by using some new functionals, S, A, B, uh, you can extend this on shell relation to the off shell one like this. And these added terms uh, express some possible trivial transformation. So this time vanish on shell. Then you can take Poisson bracket uh, of this equality and after some computation, you will find this relation. The left hand side of this equality uh, is just a Jacobi identity of your real algebra. And the right hand side uh, becomes S exact form. So this time vanish on shell. So you can find that uh, both sides of this equality vanish separately. So you can find that by using some additional new functional, uh, this equality means this new higher algebraic relation. And then you will find some higher structure constant F, A, B, C, D. And you can repeat this procedure and you can introduce more higher set of generator. And yeah, you can repeat the same calculation. Finally, you will find a set of structure constant, higher structure constant, and a set of higher generator and a set of algebraic relation, these two relations. So the right-hand side will give uh, algebraic relation between your symmetry generator, and the left-hand side will give just a component expression of L infinity relation. And here, yeah, you will find some higher structure constant, you, you may find. So, but uh, yeah, as you may know, so I mean, in many simple model, these higher terms will disappear. So, but if you consider, for example, supersymmetric uh, something or it's effective silly, this structure constant, higher structure constant may appear. And also if there is some higher order conservation law uh, that may induce one form symmetry or two form symmetry or more higher one, then you will find non-balancing st higher structure constant. So, so yeah, in general, your symmetry algebra, realization of symmetry algebra uh, will give L infinity relation and some relation with a higher structure constant. Okay, so here, these are intuitive discussion. So now I would like to switch from it to the battering Birkowski formalism. And we again consider Lagrangian without gauge degree for simplicity. So your master equation is just your classical action. And again, we suppose that your classical action is invariant under the same kind of global transformation. So you certainly have some global symmetry. 
then in the bottling Vilkovitsky formalism, for this constant parameter of your global symmetry, uh, we introduce constant ghost. Now, I write ZA for such a constant ghost. And then you can find that your classical action is still invariant under this global transformation, but now it's uh, it's its symmetry parameter is given by constant ghost. And here, in the rest of my talk, I write Cardi phi for all fields and anti fields collectively. So phi denotes your classical field and its anti field. Then we can repeat the same yeah, procedure. So we can get a corresponding generator SA. Uh, and this SA satisfies, oh, <laughs> I cannot talk. <laughs> okay. Yeah, satisfy this relation like our canonical case. And these symmetry generators take uh, very similar form as a case of the canonical formalism. But now, momenta is replaced by your antifeed. And this realization of your symmetry generator uh, will give a symmetry of your master action. So, but now we we are considering a field theory without gauge degree. So this is just a symmetry of your classical action. Okay. Now we can repeat the same calculation. So we can start from this official equality. And we can repeat the same calculation as before. Then finally, we will get these two set of relations, mean algebraic relation of your symmetry generators with higher structure constant and just our L infinity relations. So, yeah, this is a L infinity relation of your symmetry generator or symmetry algebra. And here, so this guy is the homotopy algebra, but so what is this guy? So after some computation, you can find that this guy is just equivalent to Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so this guy just to equal, I mean, this guy just describes uh, source terms of your symmetry. Like, yeah, this red one. And this relation is just equivalent to the classical master equation of your classical action plus source terms. But this is obstructed by source terms. So it is not need potent. Okay, so now yeah. We considered a quantum field theory without gauge degree. So I would like to give some comment on field theory with gauge degrees. If your field theory has some gauge degrees, then you have to start from your master equation 
instead of your classical action. And then you can apply the same calculation to your master action. And yeah, you can see the same result. And if you want to consider symmetry of your gauge fixed action, uh, which will be just for quantization, uh, yeah, the process is the same as quantum field theory without gauge degrees, because now your gauge degrees are fixed. So, yeah. And here, there's one more comment on the relation to conservation law. So we introduced constant ghost, guzi, for a given global transformation. And these constant ghosts come from usual uh, Natas theorem or usual conservation law, like this. And in many cases, this constant ghost has ghost number one, just a usual C ghost. So, but if there exists higher order conservation law, like this, so for example, Maxwell Selly or Yamil, the free term of Yamil Selly has this symmetry, then constant ghost will have ghost number N, N is the same as the number of superscript of your conserved current. So when your field theory has one form symmetry, constant ghost in the previous construction will have ghost number one or two. And you can generalize this procedure. And now I'd like, I would like to explain how to incorporate this Symmetry's homotopy algebra into Lagrangian's homotopy algebra. And again, for simplicity, I would like to consider a field theory without gauge degree. Or you can start from gauge fixed action or effective action. Okay, anyway, in this case, you can find that your classical action solves classical master equation and quantum master equation separately because your theory has no gauge degree. Then you can find that the classical master equation just gives the cyclic infinity relation like this. And this, as I explained, this uh, L, infin L infinity relation is just a component expression. And you can always switch from this component expression into a form expression or co algebraic expression. And this relation is the same as the need potency. So in summary, you can find a um, new potent operator from classical master equation. Okay, so we learned that classical master equation uh, is just equivalent to the new potency of your homotopy algebraic uh, I mean, core derivation. So we can say that this equation gives component expression and you can switch from it to form expression. So we can just do the same thing for symmetry homotopy algebra. So I mean, we can consider a functional of constant ghost like this. I write S sim of Z for such a functional of constant ghost. And we can consider 
a Poisson bracket of constant ghost and its constant anti ghost. Then you can find that this S of Z also satisfies the master equation with this constant anti bracket. Then you can find that this master equation just gives this L infinity relation that is the same as the L infinity relation of your symmetry algebra. And yeah, this is just a near potency of this operator. And this mu sim uh, gives a piece realizing total in the potency. So yeah, in previous part, we learned that your action and the source terms, source terms is given by a functional of your fees and the constant ghost, satisfies um, obstructed master equation. So this is not only important if you consider SBV plus S source. So, but you can find that we can resolve this situation by adding S sin of Z uh, into this term with extending your anti bracket. So, I mean, we can consider the sum of your classical action plus your source terms plus um, generating function with your L infinity algebra of your symmetry generator. And you can extend your anti bracket uh, by adding constant ghost part. Then you find that this total object satisfies master equation. So this equation tells us very simple near potency of total co-derivation. So this is a way to incorporate symmetries homotopy algebra into Lagrangian homotopy algebra. And you may <laughs> you may think that what are input of this mu sim or mu total? And we got uh, symmetric L infinity relation, and this is written by the near potency of this mu sim. And the natural question is that what is the vector space on which this mu sim act? And the answer is that the vector space of constant ghost like this, or it's symmetrical tensor product. So the inputs of mu total are just a tensor product of your Fox space of your fees and Fox space of this constant ghost. So it's just a, it's just like an open cross homotopy algebra. If you switch L infinity description of Lagrangian to a infinity description of your Lagrangian, so if you consider a infinity algebra of Lagrangian, then this SH will be replaced by just a tensor algebra of H, then this space is the same as uh, that of open closed homotopy algebra. So the open string part will correspond to Fox space of your fees, and the closed string part will correspond to the Fox space of your constant ghost. So it, 
this is just a <laughs> new potent guy in very natural way. Okay, so this is an example of this construction. And maybe I think one of the simplest example is in Maxwell theory. So we can consider Maxwell action. So if mu nu is the field strings and yes, C is cost of it for your uh, very engaging variance and a mu is anti fees for your vector fees then you can pick up your favorite symmetry favorite global symmetry so i would like to consider just a translation plus some constant shift so you know of course you can consider another symmetry so but uh i'd like to consider these two symmetries uh in order to get some example including a higher order structure constant oh. okay so under these two symmetries uh, you can repeat the process I explained and you will find uh, this function of constant ghost and this source term. Then in this source term, you will find higher structure constant here. Oh, no, not here, <laughs> here, sorry. <laughs> So this gives a higher F A B C D. And the sum of your classical action plus oh sorry, sorry, sum of your master action plus symmetry function plus source terms satisfies master equation. And you can find homotopy algebraic structure describing your gauge invariance plus uh choosing global symmetry. So if, if you take another global symmetries, of course, these terms takes very different forms. And in many cases, higher order structure constant disappear. Okay, so next, I'd like to explain its behavior under the path integral. And I'd like to give some comments on possible application. Okay. So, I mean, I want to consider this you know, potency in your favorite effective field theory. So to consider effective field theory, we first split uh, your action into kinetic term plus interacting term as usual. So then kinetic operator is just a new one and higher vertices will give higher order low infinity product. And then you can consider your favorite splitting of your fields. So for example, phi prime may describe UV fields and phi two prime may describe IR fields, or you can consider phi prime as a physical field and phi two prime as a physical or a gauge field. Or for quantum, for no, no, for QED, you can consider, for example, Phi prime as vector fields and phi two prime as matter fields. So you can consider your favorite splitting. And for such a splitting, we can define a generic effective action by, I mean, like a Wilsonian style. So 
we would like to consider a path integral of just this part. So for example, we can consider a path integral of higher, mo higher momentum fields or a path integral of um, physical fields or a path integral of matter fields or something like that. And in general, such a generic splitting will break your symmetry manifestly, your, your manifest symmetry. So that we can learn that even for splitting that breaks uh, your manifest invariance and uh, your symmetry, even for such a gen general splitting, you can find nonlinear realization of symmetry in your effective field theory. And the key ingredient is the homological perturbation lemma. And this lemma guarantees that an effective action, uh, you can, I mean, you can extract a homotopy algebraic structure from your effective action. And that is also nilpotent. You can check this property very directly from homological perturbation lemma. So this lemma tells us that uh, you can find effective homotopy algebra structure from your generic effective cell. So we can obtain, I mean, symmetry symmetry somatopy algebra in effective field theory or it's total one in some recursive way based on homological perturbation lemma. If your original action satisfies master equation. So here, we know that a free part of your classical action gives a near potent operator like this. And this is just a near potency of your kinetic operator. And if your classical action satisfies the master equation, the total operator is also near potent. So you can add interacting part as a perturbation. And this gives the total new potency. And now we learn that uh, the total object of it is a sum of your classical action plus source terms plus uh, function of constant ghost uh, is also new potent. So this term. Uh, can be regarded as a perturbation to your classical action. And you can find its near potency in the same way. So you can start from your free cell, then you can add a perturbation, you can add an interacting term as a perturbation, then you find the next near potency, and then you can add a source term plus uh, SC as a perturbation to your classical cell, then you will find a total new potent operator. So, yeah, this is it. And this is classical construction. So, if you consider an effective cell for this these guys, then you will find an effective action uh, that is constructed by connecting all three diagrams. So if you want to include a loop, uh, you must add this part. And again, we know the free cell has Oh, free cell satisfies the quantum master equation in addition to the classical master equation. So you can add 
uh, this h bar delta as a perturbation and get uh, another near potent operator. And if your classical action satisfies a total master equation, then this interacting part plus h bar delta uh, can be regarded as a perturbation. And you can find a near potent operator. And as long as your symmetry are uh, not anomalous, means this relation holds, then you can get, uh, I mean, you can find that your total action satisfies the quantum master equation. So you can find a near potent operator by adding uh, this term into your Lagrangian. Then you can find the total quantum near potent operator. So we can connect these near potent operators uh, by using homological perturbation lemma. So we start with free theory. In many cases, free, we can solve free theory. So because the path integral of free theory is just a Gaussian. So we know this deformation network. So the left hand side is your off shell theory, total off shell theory. And the right hand side describes the effective theory after pass integrating out your phi to prime field. So the right hand side is smaller than the left hand side. And the right hand side will describe your effective theory. So, but this, this diagram is just a correspondence between your free theory. So, if you have, I mean, oh, sorry, I mean, I mean, the left hand side can be obtained as a Gaussian integral of the left hand side. And if you can solve your free theory, you can find a propagator. And you can find that your propagator satisfies a relation of a hot decomposition. Then you can apply homological perturbation lemma. And you, you will find that even if the path integral of your splitted field, you can consider very, very general splitting. Even if such a splitting breaks the manifest invariance, we can lead or we can find nonlinear realization of symmetry in your effective theory. And uh, yeah, this is obtained by using homological perturbation, connecting these nilpotent operators. And yeah, this is a classical result. <laughs> so you can start with uh, deformation later locked of your free cellies. And you can add a perturbation. Now the perturbation is the interacting part. After the perturbation, the left-hand side uh, gives just an interacting classical action. And the right-hand side will give an effective action after pass integrating phi to prime out. This is an interacting one. And after further perturbation, this, you can find this deformation letter locked. And the left hand side describes your classical action plus source terms plus uh, S sin. And the right hand side also has the same one, but now this guy is effective one. So this A total includes um, effective action that you can get after integrating phi to prime out plus source term of symmetry generator, effective symmetry generator that uh, preserves your effective action 
and plus uh, effective SSIM. So you can find maybe non-linear realization with your effective symmetry from this, uh, yeah, from this homotopy algebra. And as you may know, this mu total prime can be obtained in a recursive way from your original mu total. And this is a classical result. And this is a quantum result, part, part of it quantum result. Now you can further add, um, yeah, this delta operator. The first uh, correspondence is that of free series. And the second one is that of interacting series without source terms. And the last one is the correspondence between classical action plus source terms plus uh, SCM and its effective one. So we can read, I mean, yeah, we, we can read this effective homotopy algebraic structure describing your get symmetry and your global symmetries uh, from your original one in some recursive way. And the recursive way is, deta yeah, is determined by homological perturbation lemma. Yeah, this is a result. And uh, yeah, this is a um, non-trivial example of this homotopy transfer. So here, so sorry, I could not find a more interesting toy model in usual field theory yet. So this example is string field theory. So we can consider a Chan Simon type of string field theory. The kinetic operator is the BLST operator of your strings. And this is manifestly Lorentz invariant. And Lorentz generator takes this form. So, but you can decompose your covariant BLST operator into light compound plus unphysical or gauge part under some symmetry transformation. So you, you can, construct, of, co of course, construct this uh, very explicitly, but yeah, I did not right here. And uh, you can start from free theory and the corresponding uh, deformation letter act just to describe uh, no ghost to sell them because right con string field has no gauge degrees or no uh, physical degree and consists of just a physical field. So just to say, just it is a no ghost to sell them. And you can add interacting part as a perturbation then you will find this deformation retract. Then the left hand side is Witten's Chan Simon type open string field theory. And the right hand side is light cone theory, but this has many, 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 I, I mean, infinitely many interacting vertices. And this has an infinity structure. So in general, gauge fixing of string field theory is very, very uh, difficult problem. We just know very few special gauges, so-called Jigel gauges or A gauges or something like that. So <coughs> unlike uh, conventional field theory, gauge fixing of string field theory is 
considered as a very difficult problem, but you can solve such a problem by, or thanks to homological perturbation lemma. And now you can add uh, source terms of Lorentz generator. Then you will find that uh, your classical light cone action. So you may think that this is in the light cone gauge, so Lorentz invariance is not manifest. So this classical light cone action is invariant under nonlinear Lorentz transformation, like this. So yeah, you can find a nonlinear realization of symmetry, your favorite symmetry in your favorite effective field theory, uh, like this. If your original um, theory satisfies a master equation. And in terms of co-algebra, this Lorentz symmetry this realization of Lorentz symmetry can be understood as a commutation relation between Lagrangian somatopy algebra and symmetry somatopy algebra and cyclic property. So, I mean, commutativity of your co derivation gives a or tells us a nonlinear realization of your symmetry. And uh, yeah, that's all. And finally, I would like to give some comments on possible application of this uh, technique. And these are topics uh, that I just began to study. So <laughs> I don't know so much, but let me explain. So when we consider and topologically non-trivial space time, then homotopy algebra of your symmetry generator takes more different form. So because now your topology is changed. So this is because cosulted resolution of your constant antifield takes different form. So I mean, in topologically non-trivial space-time, as you know, um, algebraic Poincaré lemma does not hold. So there are another candidate appear. And solving the master equation also tells us what kind of new, 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 new guys should be included. So, so I mean, yes, solving the master equation or finding the nil potential of your homotopy algebra uh, just tells us what uh, new component will appear in this construction. So, but I don't have an interesting three model yet, just study. So, and the next thing is that by using this technique, non-relativistic number Goldstone the theorem might be written. Or well, you can understand this theorem more correctly in terms of homotopy algebra. So yeah, of course, relativistic number Goldstone number Goldstone theorem is very simple, but if you remove uh, the condition of relativistic uh, covariance, or I mean, your, your action is covariant under Lorentz transformation, then, then, yeah, the counting of degree yeah, meets some mismatch. And such a mismatch is solved by people who are in condensed matter physics. So, but the approach is, I mean, model by model or <laughs> case by case. So, so I guess homotopy algebra technique may provide more systematic description about number Goldstone's theorem, or 
uh, I mean, coset after spontaneous symmetry breaking. So, so but uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know much about group theory or coset model construction, so I need some help of expert. <laughs> And the last one is that uh, this total homotopy algebraic structure would describe anomaly or anomaly inflow, anomaly matching condition. And that also includes general global symmetries, like a one form symmetry or two form symmetry or something like that. And yeah, so oh, yeah, that's all. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Hiroaki. <laughs> nice talk. Uh, are there questions? I have a question. Um... If you um, if you gauge uh, suppose you have a global symmetry at hand and and you want to do this procedure, if you first gauged it and and just you know implemented the, the normal BRST procedure, would would you have arrived to the same uh, result and then just like set those ghosts being constant or or would that be different? So 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 you you mean that you would like to start from BRST gauge fixed action? Right. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm just saying I'll have a so, so I know how to uh, you know pass to the BB description when I have a theory with the um, um, local symmetry, right? That's that's mm -hmm. what the BB is good for, at least in my simplistic mind. Uh, and mm -hmm. um, and but but if I have global symmetry, I can always gauge it. I can introduce these auxiliary gauge fields, right? And then then well, I have local symmetry so i can i can do what i what i'm taught to do uh, it, w will this be the same thing as, as what you're describing and, and uh, or so, so you mean you you'd like to gazing your global symmetry and then and then just do the bv for like yeah, yeah, you know yeah. for this new uh, yeah okay so in that case if you are lucky yeah, I mean, yeah, if, if you're lucky after gazing this guzi into some feed, then you can find the same classical master equation. Mm -hmm. So, but if there is some uh, two fifth anomaly, your classical master equation will break. So anomalous gauge theory does not satisfy some master equation if you don't use a non-local feed. Mm -hmm. So if your theory is not anomalous, then you can apply the completely same technique. But if your theory is anomalous, you will find a non-local obstruction. Mm -hmm. So so I mean, I think there are two options. The first one is that uh, your cell is anomalous, so it's useless. Then the second option is that you can find uh, some phenomena like uh, anomaly inflow. I mean, you can prepare another system canceling such a non-local anomaly. Then you can you can combine your two your original system with some boundary cell or right. Yeah, and you will find a totally uh, near potent one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, is it okay? <laughs> yeah, right. So, 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 just to repeat, if I understand correctly, if if the if that global symmetry is non-anomalous, I can I can gauge, uh, do the BV, and then freeze the ghosts, and it will be the same. Uh, if if it's not that, then you're extending it to to those global symmetries. Where okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, so but I, I think there is one point that we should check. So when, when you're gazing your feed, 
when you gauge your constant fit, then I think you would like to, um, I mean, you may add a kinetic term for your gauged fit. And mm -hmm. you, you, you have to add uh, such a kinetic term to this total object. Right. right. And you have to check a master equation for the object is total plus your kinetic term, new kinetic term. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You have and to on top of that, I guess gauging is by far not unique, right? Like, like I can I can gauge non minimally, and I, I guess there's a lot of freedom. True. So yeah, this is the same as uh, finding a non-trivial cohomologically non-trivial non-trivial element in ghost number one or minus one or. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just the same to mm. solve the function. Thank you. Maybe I have a question. So, in, in the first part, did the action on the anti fields, do you know, does it always come? Is it just lifted from the action on the fields, or can it have a more general? Oh, first part mean. Oh, it's right. <laughs> so when you had this action to which you 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 assign, yeah, maybe here or yes, this one. Yeah, just because so 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 variation of phi is something. Mm -hmm. So. Oh. Yeah, so, so that, does this action, like, you know, like, the question is whether it, it is, because this is on fields and anti-fields together, right? Mm, if you consider a field theory without gauge degree, then this delta A phi is a function of fields only. Ah, okay. So, but if, if if you start from master action, this delta phi may include the anti field dependence. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I have another question for you, if I may. Um, uh, this um, this number Goldstone boson in 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 relativistic theory. So I, I remember there there's like a nice geometric understanding of of this cutting down the number of the bosons based on the inverse six constraint, right? Will that somehow will that somehow emerge from from the homotopy algebra description? Could you could you comment on that, or is there is there something known about? Inverse six constraint in, in that in that respect. Honestly speaking, I don't know. I want to know. <laughs> yeah. So, but I think on um, yeah. After after number gold stone number gold stone was not appear, your model symmetry or your model will be described by some set in some good model mm -hmm. and uh, often it takes exponential of uh, some feet and I, I I guess such a I mean such a representation of your nonlinear symmetry um, may be obtained by solving the recursion relation of homological perturbation lemma but I, I yeah. Just a, just, just a, <laughs> I just guess. Uh, no yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, because exponential is a solution of recursion relation. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, but I don't know <laughs> yet. And when you wanted to find the examples of uh, 
um, BV theories uh, with uh, global symmetries. You said that you could only come up with a string field theory because all other quantum field theories are trivial. Huh? Did I understand correctly? No, maybe if you include supersymmetry, I mean, there are many ways to describe supersymmetric theory. And if when you uh, include many, many auxiliary, auxiliary fields, then your supersymmetric transformation may be very, very manifest. But if you integrating out um, some of auxiliary fields, your, your supersymmetric transformation may be nonlinear and maybe closer just on shell then such a classical model, even such a classical model gives a, uh, I mean, not, not, not trivial example <laughs> of these higher symmetry generators and higher structure constant or or uh, I mean, or just a Maxwell type theory, then you can find a higher structure constant when you couple your Maxwell theory to some background where one form symmetry appears manifestly. So even in usual quantum field theory, uh, yeah, there are some non-trivial example described by this method. Okay, thank you. Or we can apply this method of realization of symmetry to um, a flow of the normalization group. Yeah, then we can find uh, yeah, your favorite symmetry in in or along your favorite flow of denormalization. So, but anyway, we need uh, some seed action. <laughs> Satisfying master equation. Okay, if there are no more questions, then we can thank uh, Hiraki again. And conclude uh, thank the you. seminar. Thank you very much.